This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. Coming up on March 30th from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada, undefeated WBO junior middleweight champion Tim Zhu is scheduled to square off against former unified welterweight champion Keith Thurman. This one will be a non-title fight taking place at 155, just one pound north of the junior middleweight limit. The bout will be streamed on Amazon Prime Video Pay-Per-View, the first fight in the new PBC partnership with Amazon. Not many people are giving Thurman much of a chance in this one, and understandably so. For starters, Thurman has been very inactive since suffering his only professional loss against Manny Pacquiao back in July 2019. He has fought just once, winning a 12-round unanimous decision against Mario Barrios in February 2022. Meanwhile, Zhu has had 11 fights since Thurman lost against Pacquiao. Beyond that, Thurman's best days were at 147, and this fight is happening all the way up at 155. Bottom line, Thurman is smaller, older, and far less active. All the same, while many fans are down on the matchup, I can't help but find myself a little intrigued. At his best, Thurman was a talented welterweight. Last July, we finally got the showdown for undisputed welterweight supremacy when Terence Crawford thoroughly outclassed Errol Spence Jr. That one took years to finally come together. But once upon a time, that duo of undefeated welterweight champions was actually a trio of undefeated welterweight champions, where Thurman himself was very much a part of that discussion. Pacquiao represented the old guard, but when he faced Thurman, 40-year-old Pac-Man had a turn-back-the-clock type of performance, where he floored Thurman in the opening round. It was a tremendous night for Pacquiao, but what often gets overlooked and forgotten is the fact that Thurman never stopped battling, and he made a very strong account of himself, particularly in the later rounds of the fight. Granted, this was a 40-year-old Pacquiao well past his best, but all the same, Pacquiao clearly proved that he was still an elite welterweight that night, and Thurman battled him on fairly even terms, despite ultimately losing a 12-round split decision. All of that being said, the fact remains that Thurman is now 35 years old, and he has only fought once since. But what makes this fight an interesting clash is that Thurman, despite all of the disadvantages on paper, is in a situation where he has absolutely nothing to lose. Where if he could turn back the clock a bit and come to fight with focus and determination, he has the talent that he could make things interesting where he can perhaps provide Zhu with a real test. Zhu is in a situation where, despite wanting a fight against Jermel Charlo, the first undisputed junior middleweight champion in the modern four belt era, it never materialized. Instead, Charlo moved all the way up to 168 when he unsuccessfully challenged super middleweight king Canelo Alvarez. The decision by Charlo to pursue the Canelo money fight was understandable, but at the same time it was disappointing because a showdown between Charlo and Zhu provides an inherently interesting clash in its own right. But that didn't happen, and Zhu was elevated to the WBO championship without having to win that title in the ring. That in itself was unfortunate, because Zhu never got the opportunity to try and win that belt in the ring, which comes with its fair share of criticisms about being named a so-called email champion. I do not think that is a fair assessment here, much the same as the case with Devin Haney when he was named WBC lightweight champion, and more recently when Boots Ennis was named the IBF welterweight champion, but at the same time all three situations suck. When a champion is not afforded the chance of winning a major world championship under the big spotlight. Zhu made his first official WBO title defense last October against Brian Mendoza, and this was a damn fine display from Zhu, where he exhibited excellent ring smarts and an uncanny ability to control the range and dictate the pace, while still being able to intelligently apply pressure and attack. 
Zhu has a very sharp and powerful punch, with great punch variety. And while he did not stop Mendoza, the force behind his shots was still abundantly clear throughout the fight. In some ways, this was perhaps Zhu's most impressive performance to date, even if the stoppage victory against Tony Harrison ended in far more dramatic fashion. To his credit, Mendoza was showing a lot of heart and toughness, as Zhu was really pouring it on late. At the end of the fight, Zhu was awarded a 12-round unanimous decision. And that is where we stand, Zhu coming off his lone WBO title defense, and Thurman fighting for just the second time in the last four and a half years. And while logically all signs point to Zhu, I guess what I find most appealing about this matchup is that it provides both men with a potentially high-profile opportunity. Zhu has the opportunity to shine on Amazon Prime against a known American boxer who was once a great talent. Thurman gets the opportunity to resurrect his career with a strong showing, and especially if he puts forth a winning effort. And even Amazon Prime Video gets the chance to showcase their production value in terms of today's competition, which is primarily ESPN and DAZN. Maybe Amazon can actually work some of the magic that used to make HBO so great. Still, the boxing production gold standard to this day as far as I'm concerned. At the end of the day, I believe both men will be highly motivated and determined. Zhu can help grow his name to become a more widely recognized champion, and a strong effort from Thurman can perhaps put him back in contention, where a win would obviously go a long way. But that's the thing of it. I think a best case scenario for Thurman is putting forth a strong effort where he remains competitive and bides his time to stretch things late. And even then I have doubts that it will be enough. I do believe Thurman is skilled and smart enough that, sooner or later, even if he is highly motivated and focused and determined, he will realize he is outgunned and be forced to bide his time in an effort to survive and stretch it late. And I think this will ultimately be his undoing, where Zhu will chip away and eventually wear him down. From my official prediction, I am taking Tim Zhu by later round stoppage, where I think if he doesn't outright knock Thurman out, that either Thurman's corner or the referee will save him from himself. So I'm taking Zhu by 10th round stoppage, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if it ended sooner. I just think there are too many variables that favor Tim here. But as always, what the hell do I know? I ain't exactly Quasimodo over here. But if I am wrong about this one, chances are we're going to see something incredible. Either way, I am actually looking forward to this one. Best of luck to both Tim Zhu and Keith Thurman. Looking forward to seeing what Amazon brings to the table here. What do you think about the fight? Please share your thoughts in the comments section. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner. You know, Quasimodo predicted all this.